All right, your call's coming up in the next segment. We go to Dana Milbank of the Washington Post, but first, let's all watch a little bit of Hillary in action last night. I can get the money that I need by taxing the wealthy, by closing loopholes, the things that we are way overdue for doing. And I think once I'm in the White House, we will have enough political capital to be able to do that. Well, but I am conscious of the fact that we have to also be very clear, especially with young people, about what kind of government is going to do what for them and what it will cost. Senator. Well, Secretary Clinton, you're not in the White House yet. <laughs> All right. Joining us now is Dana Milbank, opinion columnist, of course, for The Washington Post. Welcome back, Dana. Hey, it's good to be with you. Well, good to talk to you. All right. Uh, l let me ask you, first of all, about yesterday's debate. Then I want to get to uh, today's column uh, that you mm -hmm. wrote for The Washington Post. How is it possible that they go through that whole debate and the two women moderators who, and, you know, they bragged about or Hillary bragged about three women on the stage first time. Mm -hmm. Not one of them asked Hillary about the news that your paper had out yesterday that the inspector general for the state department had issued subpoenas to the clinton foundation not only did they not ask it but bernie sanders apparently had no interest in talking about it <laughs> well i you know I, I guess it's fair to say why was that a question last night although i guess in fairness that that thing had been has been a huge topic in all the uh or many of the previous debates, so I, I don't know. I, well, this was a new, I, uh, this was I a new story, Dana. Yeah, I, I can't speak for what they were doing last night. I think they were probably trying to uh, uh, plow some new ground. And where, while, what, whereas that may be the interesting thing to uh, conservatives and to Republicans, I don't think that the particularly. Uh, uh, a divisive issue among Democrats. All right, but, but I mean, yeah, Hillary yeah. Clinton has a, you know, she obviously has a uh, trustworthiness, uh, honesty uh, problem, um, uh, but I, I, I think that's pretty well uh, baked in there already. So probably Sanders wouldn't gain anything from it, and uh, it probably wouldn't elucidate anything in, in, in last night. But if you were on, if you were on the uh, uh, as a moderator, would you have asked that question? Well, I would have. I would think sometime within uh, the two hours you might find uh, uh, time for that sort of thing. But I, I, I'm not a moderator for very good reasons. I'm not terribly. No, no. But you, moder but you, you would have. And, you would have found time. You think? I think, but I don't. You know, I mean, I, I think uh, you know, Gwen and Judy are uh, terrific. So I don't. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I just can't see if Donald. If news had come out about Donald Trump, I mean, if Donald Trump were already under FBI investigation, and then it turned out that they subpoenaed documents from the Trump organization i can't imagine that that wouldn't have been asked at a debate of donald trump am i wrong it, 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 it's, it's not knowable is it it's not what it's not knowable no but you could have an opinion am i wrong you think i'm wrong well it's hard to say i mean uh you know it's been it's been uh you know. It's been uh, tracked over again and again and again. Well, not this part. But anyway, okay, let's move on. Uh, you know, Hillary the woman, we all know she's a woman. Uh, she keeps telling us, and she told it to us again yesterday. Uh, yet uh, there's a piece today that came out uh, that shows that Hillary's top six campaign officials are all men. Uh, mm -hmm. might, might she have been asked about that last night? Well, I think that is an important subject, and I've written about that myself. I've written, written about that fairly early in the campaign. And I think I, I do think that that's a mistake that she's made, um, and she has, uh, you know, basically done this sort of plug and play with the uh, uh, Obama campaign apparatus. And there are a bunch of a bunch of boys, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think that probably. Uh, has not served her uh, particularly well. She came into this campaign thinking, all right, well, she sort of ran as the tough commander-in-chief last time, played down the, you know, this potentially historic nature of being the first woman uh, to be president. Uh, she didn't do it that way this time, and so it sort of brought out more of, uh, of that historic nature and made more of an overt uh, uh, feminist appeal. She seems to be you know, right back to saying, no, Bernie, I'm, I'll be the better commander-in-chief. So I think that it hasn't really endured, and maybe that's because she's got the uh, uh, got the uh, Obama boys uh, uh, running her campaign. Yeah. All right. Uh, but again, uh, would would you you probably since you wrote a column about all that today, you think you would have asked her if you were uh, moderating I think, yeah, yesterday? Yeah, I think that's. I mean, that you know, that's clearly a a hot topic that is, I think, uh, 
potentially divisive within the Democratic uh, electorate. So, uh, so I would think, you know, certainly that I, I would I would have jumped on that before uh, the question of uh, the emails again, just because I don't think that's something that you know the people making the decision now in the primaries are, are thinking about. I know you're thinking about it, and well, people in November may be thinking about it. But uh, but but yeah, I think the issue of uh, of gender and uh, and how they run their campaigns is very front and center now. Let, let me get to two things and combine them into one, two recent columns. Jeb Bush is not dead. And uh, asking, uh, did, you know, did Marco Rubio, uh, can he survive? Did he self-destruct in New Hampshire? So where are you on those two? Well, uh, we'll know uh, um, more after uh, uh, tomorrow night, uh, obviously. I do kind of have a feeling that the Marco Rubio thing was kind of like a Rick Perry oops moment that it may be hard to recover from because he finally got into the spotlight there, uh, which he really hadn't had the whole campaign. And in that moment, uh, he, he gave the worst possible uh, impression. So, well, you know, look, there's, um, you know, what do we got, four guys that, Left basically uh, uh, competing for the honor of uh, being the alternative to Trump, and n- none of them, you know, R- Rubio looked like he was going to break out. Right. Uh, now he hasn't. I've suggested that, you know, with Christie out, with Fiorina out, um, uh, Kasich may be seen as uh, too moderate. Uh, and if and if and if Rubio does indeed succumb to you know people thinking uh, he's an empty suit, wow! Then you are left with Jeb. Right, 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 right. You know, it's, it's seemingly impossible. I mean, as, as I wrote this week, he was you know we all brought out the embalming fluid for him, uh, <laughs> uh, already. So uh, we shall I mean, see. I, don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it, I think we should all give up predicting anything after uh, after this election. Right, Dana. Great to talk to you, sir. Have a great weekend. Sure, you too.